continuing my role guide series. First off, we did a guide covering uh, the beginning Reddit Online, a few other guides too, and uh, the three other roles that came out with the Frontier Pursuits update, Trader, Collector, Bounty Hunter. All that was basically three guides in one video. Now we lead to the fourth role added to Reddit Online, the Moon Shider Guide. I hope that this guide, just like all my guides, proves to be helpful to all of you aspiring moonshiners out there learning how to become a moonshiner. By the way, as of the making of this guide, I have no idea where the poison poppy moonshine is. It's a dynamic. It rarely spawns. A lot of people are trying to find it. Maybe one day we will locate the elusive poison poppy moonshine shack. But anyways, we need to talk about one of the previous roles, one of the original three, the trader role. Because in order to be a moonshiner, you first have to be a trader. So basically, the way it's going to work is that these are the three, I guess, uh, base roles. And the plan from Rockstar is to stack them with, like, I guess, the, the next stage of the evolution of roles. And the first evolution was uh, from trader to moonshiner. The requirements for becoming a trader is 15 bars of gold. And once you get that, then you can be a trader. I did the guide going over collector, trader, bounty hunter already. And in order to become a moonshiner, you're going to need 25 bars of gold. Plus, as a trader, you either have to reach rank five trader or at the very least complete your very first trader sell. Even if it's just a few items, a few goods at Crips' camp, and you do a local sell, then that should qualify you to get a letter from Crips. He'll tell you you got a letter from him to go meet Maggie Fike over in Emerald Ranch. Right there, that's Maggie. You'll meet her at Emerald Ranch. Now, if you ever want to move your shack, you can always go to Camp and Properties, and then go to Moonshine Shack. And then you can either invite players to your Moonshine Shack over here in the interaction menu, or if you decide you don't like this particular location, you can always move to a different location. But the five locations that you get to choose from in the game for Moonshine Shack at the beginning is in the bayou, the Grizzlies, Hennigan Stead, the Heartlands, and Tall Trees. Now, when it comes to the Shack of Choice, which one is the best one? Well, that depends entirely on you and what location you happen to like the most when it comes to Red Dead Online. Do you prefer the bayou, you know, in the Scarlet Meadows region around Rhodes or Saint Denis in the swamp? Is that your area? Or do you like it up in the Grizzlies? Or do you prefer Hennigan Stead out in the New Austin area? Or up in the Heartlands? Or do you want to be in West Elizabeth in the tall trees overlooking the Great Plains and Blackwater? So when it comes to the choice of where to put the shack, it's entirely up to you. And if you ever decide to move it, you can always spend $250 in order to relocate your shack if you don't like the first choice you went with when you first are starting off with the moon shiner's roll. Now, before we go over the items, the abilities that you end up unlocking or the ability to unlock and purchase as a moon shiner, let's go over how you can rank up the moon shiner roll from zero to 20 with the moon shiner roll XP. So a couple ways you can earn roll XP towards the moon shiner is come up here to Maggie and you can do bootlegger missions, which is free roam missions for her, where you go after revenue agents and destroy their roadblocks, or you go after other moonshiners, or you go and get into bar fights. That's my favorite. And upon completion of bootlegger missions and story missions, you will get rewarded roll XP to help you rank up the moonshiner roll. Another way you can get roll XP is through the daily challenges. Not the regular daily challenges, but roll daily challenges. So as you rank up the Moonshiner roll, you will unlock between one to three daily Moonshine challenges. So right now I have three. And by doing one or all of these that you have unlocked every day, you will continue to earn roll XP for the Moonshiner roll until you eventually reach rank 20. So this is the third way to rank up the moon shiner roll from zero to 20. Now the fourth way to do it is down here with Marcel and one of the story missions you have to do or one of the very first missions you have to do is to go rescue uh, Marcel because he's 
the guy that's going to make your moonshine. So you come down here and you start the moonshine production. And then once the moonshine production is complete, then you deliver it. You make sure that the revenue agents don't get you. And upon completion of a moonshine sale, you will be rewarded money as well as roll XP to go towards the moonshine or roll. So there's a few ways you can earn roll XP in order to rank up the moonshine or roll. Now bear in mind, anytime you go up against the revenue agents, whether in a story mission or during one of the bootlegger missions, like with the Roblox, or especially when you're delivering moonshine, always make sure that you are prepared. Have your weapons clean. Make sure you have express ammo or high velocity ammo in your revolvers, pistols, repeaters, rifles, shotguns, whatever you happen to use, your weapons of choice. And always make sure you have tonics on hand. Make sure you got plenty of tonics and always take a tonic before you engage the revenue agents. And make sure that they're in the items will for you to quickly access because they do carry out a lot of damage. They're very aim body. At the moment, they're the toughest AIs in the game. And of course, in the items will, you can find your food to help get your uh, health core up. And if you happen to have minty game meat, you can go into your satchel and select minty game meat. If you want to know more about uh, meats in the game, uh, check out my meats guide video. So back to Marcel real quick. We're going to talk about getting everything set up for the moonshine business. Now, we'll go ahead and initiate the moonshine business with Marcel, the production you will have three options to choose from. Now, when you start off, you only have one option, but as you rank up your moonshiner role, you will have the ability to create even better moonshine. You start off with a weak moonshine, which pays out the least, but also is the quickest for Marcel to make. So that's the one you start off with. And as you rank up, you will eventually get to the rank where you can get the condenser upgrade. And the condenser upgrade will allow you to start making average moonshine as you rank up even higher in the moonshiner roll you will unlock the polished copper upgrade which for a limited time is available for free for everybody that has their twitch prime account linked to their rockstar social club so the strong moonshine is the way to go yes it takes the longest to produce but it will make you the most amount of money in the moonshine shack the least amount of money you're going to make is the weak moonshine and it's gonna feel like at first you're not even breaking even, but once you get to strong moonshine, you definitely wanna continue having Marcel make moonshine at the strong level. It takes longer, but you're definitely gonna make more money, and as you can tell, the mash price is the same for all three, and by doing a bootlegger mission before doing one of these uh, productions with Marcel, it actually is supposed to lower the cost of the mash. Supposed to. All right, so let's go ahead and set up Strong Moonshine. And the next thing you want to do after you do that is go into flavoring because you're going to have a few options in flavoring to pick from depending on weak, average, as well as Strong Moonshine. And the two things you want to look at is first off the price tag, right? You want to get the most bang for your buck. And you also want to make sure that you have that Moonshine flavor available for you to use. And as you can tell, berry cobbler requires one canned peach, one raspberry, and one regular peach. Next, appleberry crumb requires one apple, one blackberry, one vanilla flower. Spiced Island Moonshine requires one canned apricot, one currant, and one Caribbean rum. Now, Caribbean rum is a collectible antique bottle. So for now on, collectors, if you're also doing the moonshining, you might want to save the Caribbean rums unless you're selling an uh, antique bottle collection of alcohol as a whole and then sacrifice one. But for the most part, I would hold on to the Caribbean rum. So you want to make sure you always have these items on you. You can loot them off of enemy NPCs like the revenue agents or the uh, rival moonshiners. Or you can find them throughout the map like uh, mint, vanilla flower. And uh, Creek Plum is an American wildflower, which is a collectible. So once again, same thing as the Caribbean rum. You do not want to sell the Creek Plums anymore. Hold on to them. Do not sell them to Mount Azar unless you happen to have a whole collection of wildflowers to sell to her. So hold on to the Creek Plums. And those are basically the ones that I have available. Now, some will come in and some will come out. They'll fluctuate 
But no matter what the case is, when it comes to the different flavoring options that are at your disposal, depending on what you have in your satchel from, you know, gathering collectibles or wildflowers or Caribbean rum or even the regular plants and herbs in the game, you always want to go with the one that's going to make you the most money. So for me, it would be between the Spiced Island Moonshine as well as the Wild Creek Moonshine. For me, I would probably go with uh, Spiced Island because why not? Let's just go with that. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The point is I'm going to make $247.50 upon successful delivery of the moonshine. All you really need to do is flavor it once. Whenever you try to flavor it with something else, I don't think it's going to increase the amount of money you make. I think you can only really flavor it, but you can reflavor it, so you don't want to waste materials. Flavor it once, and then you're done. All you got to do is wait for, in this case, 40-something minutes, once the production's complete, then you'll get a notification that the production's ready. You and your posse can come back here to the Moonshine Shack, meet up with Marcel, and then you can go deliver your moonshine, safely get it to its location, and then you make your XP, you make your money. And for those of you still ranking up the Moonshine or Roll, it will obviously earn you Roll XP. Before you go off selling, a little disclaimer you will get a list of buyers. Now this will reset after a certain amount of time if you're not happy with the buyer options available to you. But for whatever rhyme or reason, there's always a certain gentleman that is more than willing to buy your moonshine. Bert Higgins, he loves to lowball you. Unless you need the money and the Roll XP and you don't want to wait, just say no to Bert. FYI, the Moonshiner store is where you can get the upgrades for the Moonshine business. So condenser is definitely important to upgrade it to average strength Moonshine. And then eventually once you get to the point to where you can unlock polished copper upgrade, get that as well, especially once again, those of you that have your Twitch Prime account linked to your Rockstar Social Club for a limited time, we're able to get this upgrade for free. Now, for anyone interested, just like I did with the uh, guide going over these three roles, I'm going to talk about, in my opinion, what you should or shouldn't consider spending your tokens and money on that you end up unlocking as a Moonshiner. So there's some things that I think are good to unlock, and then there's some things that you can pass on. Or In the end, it really depends on what you prefer. So once you start with the Moonshiner roll, you get the Novice Kit, which gives you all these items that you can spend tokens and money and our gold on. The Ivor Saddle is a top tier saddle, and if you haven't got the Nacogdoches yet, or you just want another different type of saddle for a different horse, I would say the Ivor Saddle is a great looking saddle, and it has really good stats to it. It's up there in the same echelon as, say, the Nacogdoches Saddle, the uh, Panther Saddle, so it's, it's a really good saddle. Now, some of these other items, I would just take it or leave it. It just depends on whether or not you like this particular clothing item, uh, this holster, or, uh, well, holster and gun belt, uh, these gloves, the Holmes gloves. They look pretty cool. It'll cost you uh, eight gold, though, plus one token, which you can purchase at Madame Nazar's. You can also get a pamphlet for Toxic Moonshine Throwable if you want to use these as a throwable. And as you rank up your moonshine, you notice just like the other rolls, you end up unlocking other items that you're rewarded with. Various tokens. I see the Berry Cobbler Moonshine Recipe, as well as some dance skills for the dance floor if you decide to get the bar as well as the band. And for the Promising Kits, uh, this is definitely a must. The Condenser Upgrade becomes available in the Promising Kit as you reach rank 5 Moonshiner. And just like with everything else, uh, these other items, you can take it or leave it. The clothing, the uh, <laughs> ornate that you can put on your gun belt for the uh, hip flask, the variant for the sawed-off shotgun, unless you really like your sawed-off shotgun and you just happen to like this variant, I would save your money and your tokens. The belt buckle is probably the same thing. By the way, you can get the belt buckle at Madame Nazar as well if you have six gold and one token. Uh, take it or leave it. Uh, the Flammable Moonshine is another uh, potential weapon you can purchase with tokens in $20. And other things you unlock, uh, rank 5, uh, the Wild Creek Moonshine recipe, uh, the Ingredient Satchel upgrade, more tokens, a new buyer order, which is great, 
as we move on into the established kit, you can see that you get the master distiller, reduce the time it takes to create a batch of moonshine. So that's probably why you notice it takes me less time to have my weak, average, or strong moonshine produced by Marcel than maybe some of you because you only get this at rank 15. So once you reach rank 15, then you end up getting the master distiller and you get some more tokens. You also get the spiced island moonshine recipe, another uh, mad dance skill. And then of course the polished copper upgrade. Once again, you can get this for free for a limited time. Uh, as long as you have your Twitch Prime account linked to your Rockstar Social Club. Some other uh, unique items you can end up acquiring if you want. One token, eight bars of gold for this monocle. We have finally have monocles in the game, yay. And you can also get this at Madame Nazar. Uh, some new clothing items, uh, another uh, holster you can add, the side holster to go with the Levin's gun belt. So that looks good if you like the look of it. If not, no big deal. And then you get uh, this neat center uh, parted uh, hairstyle, I guess. <laughs> and finally, you will eventually get the distinguished kit. Rank 15, some more tokens. The material satchel upgrade, as well as more tokens. Protection, greatly reduce the risk of attacks. You get this at rank 19. Rank 20, you will unlock the rowdy dance for dancing on the dance floor for the band in the bar. And some other items, you can take it or leave it. The uh, Wilkesboro outfit, as well as the Stuart Top Hat. Uh, hangover emote, if you want to look like you're suffering from a hangover. And one of the best new horses in the game, the No Folk Roadster, rank 20 horse. This will cost you a couple tokens and $950. Now, I always like to say this when it comes to the raw horses. You should always wait until you reach rank 20 before you get the top tier horses in the game because there's technically six coats for this new breed. The Moonshiner Horse, aka the Norfolk Roadster. But stat-wise, core-wise, these are the two best of the breed. So these two, the Dappled Buckskin, the Spotted Tricolor Coats, are the two you unlock once you reach level 20, rank 20 Moonshiner. These two coats look really good. However, buyer beware, these are the bottom tier Moonshiner horses. I wish we had the option, I mentioned this before, to pick between the six coats, but unfortunately as of right now, we cannot. So just warning you in advance, the mid-tier Norfolk Roadsters are only a little bit better in stats and cores than the bottom tier Norfolk Roadsters. Even if you once again like one of these two coats, my advice is wait until you reach rank 20 and go with one of these two instead. It's unfortunate because the other four coats look great as well, and maybe eventually Rockstar will fix this issue and make it to where we could pick between all six of the coats. I wish that was the case, but as of right now, this is the way the horse system works in Red Dead Online, even if a lot of us don't like it very much. Now, final thoughts regarding the bar and the band. If you're on PlayStation 4, you actually can get the band expansion for free for, once again, a limited time only. So everybody on PlayStation 4, thanks to the deal that Sony has with Rockstar, you can take advantage of that. But first and foremost, you will have to purchase the bar expansion from uh, Maggie upstairs. The bar is okay. I wish we generate a passive income from it, but as of right now, we don't. It's still kind of a fun place to come hang out with uh, your friends, your posse have some moonshine, uh, get drunk, do some silly nonsense together. And if you have the band, you can also uh, dance while the band's playing. You can also play various musical instruments like banjo, cello, piano, uh, guitar, etc. So yeah, that's pretty much it. My guide for the Moonshiner Roll. I hope that this has been a useful and helpful guide for those of you uh, just starting out with the Moonshiner Roll. And you can always go back to my playlist and check out previous guides, the beginner's guide, uh, the other roles that I've done, collector, trader, bounty hunter. Once again, those three guides are basically three guides in one video. I do have that video timestamped depending on the role that you prefer. And other various guides can be found in the playlist. By the way, for any of you moonshiners out there that are distinguished that have also reached rank 20, if you have any additional tips or tricks for those starting out in the moonshiner role, as always, feel free and leave those below in the comments section. And if you have any future guide suggestions that you'd like me to do regarding Red Dead Online, you can also 
Leave your suggestions for future guides below in the comments section.